Hey everyone, uh, Nate here. Uh, I want to talk about the cooler, uh, specifically on the SVX, of course. But before we get there, uh, I want to bring up a lot of stuff that uh, you may or may not know about the actual transmission fluid, the temperature, and all that kind of good stuff before we get to the actual cooler part. Uh, as I said, my name's Nate. Uh, for many, many years, I was an auto technician. I uh, started out in the early 2000s, uh, was always really into the Subaru world. I've had an SVX since the 90s. Um, I built my first transmission for an SVX in 03-ish about. Um, tinkered with them throughout the years. I grew up on the SVX transmission, and so I learned pretty much everything I know about transmissions by studying that transmission first then branching into, of course, others. So it's uh, near and dear to me. I know quite a bit about it, so I just wanted to put some of this down before I forget it. The last time I've been inside one of these transmissions was 2014, and I'm out of the automotive game now completely. So, uh, like I said, first thing I wanna talk about is actually what is the transmission fluid and what are we even talking about with fluids? Okay, so, Forget about transmissions at all. Let's just talk about fluid. If I have a swimming pool, then I have a body of fluid. And it's just this, this fluid all together. And due to the nature of fluids, it's not for very long, it's not gonna stay heated or cool in one area. If I pour boiling water into the pool, that heat is not gonna stay in that area where that water went in for very long it's going to rapidly spread to the rest of the fluid body. Okay, so realistically, if I'm talking about the temperature of a swimming pool, if I pour that boiling water in and then take the temperature right there locally as I'm pouring that boiling water in, it's gonna be 212 degrees. Now, does that mean the temperature of my pool is 212 degrees? Of course not. Same thing if we think about heating that pool. So say uh, my pool, it's, it's, you know, it's getting to be summertime, not quite ready to jump in it yet because it's a little bit cold. So I'm gonna fire up a pool heater. Maybe we've got a gas heater. So the water is gonna be pumped out of the pool into a heating element, and then it's gonna be piped into the pool. So in a little area, we're gonna have super hot water coming out, say 100 degrees, and the rest of the pool is 65 degrees. Well, same thing, I'm not gonna take the temperature of the pool at the outlet of the heater. That wouldn't make any sense. I'm concerned about the, the temperature of the fluid body, the total temperature. So it would make sense, just like they do in pools, they have the little floating thermometer, right? So you're just gonna check that temperature in the fluid body. We're, we're gonna do the same thing in the transmission. Um, you know, unless we're talking about initial design stages or, or some other kind of issue, we're not really concerned about what the fluid temperature is right here, over here, over there. We wanna know what the temperature is in the pool. And the pool is the pan. That's the transmission pan here at the bottom. Stamped steel pan, aluminum housing here. Of course, we got our, our cast pump body there. So having said that, let's talk about what the fluid actually does and how it gets hot. Okay, so transmission fluid has many jobs. One of them is definitely a coolant. Uh, the other, one of the other jobs is actually as a friction uh, transmission mechanism. Well, what, what does that mean? Okay, so if you look inside a torque converter, it's basically as if I took two fans and, and faced each other. If I turn the one fan on, the air going across it is going to rotate the other fan. Now we're gonna, the torque converter does the same thing except it uses liquid. So the transmission fluid comes in and hits a fan and that causes it to turn from the side that's driven directly from the engine. Now when that happens, the fluid, you know, it's, it's bouncing around in there, it's, it's getting moved different directions, it's getting compressed. It's, it's shearing is the term that they use. So that shearing generates heat. So when we talk about the torque converter, did the torque converter generate the heat? Well, I mean, in a way, yes, but realistically that heat was generated in the fluid itself. Now, of course, that heat is gonna be transferred to the metal torque converter, but that, that heat was generated in the fluid. 
That is most of the heat that we're going to get in the transmission, and it is a lot. Um, second most heat we're going to get is from the pump itself. Now the pump in a transmission, uh, depending on the design, can do significant pressure. It's one of the main reasons in the old days that automatic transmissions had significantly lower performance than a manual is because it had to turn the pump. The SVX is no different. It's, a, it's an older design, it uses old fluid, uh, and, it, and it's got to have this pump churning away up to you know, a couple hundred PSI. So as that pump is compressing that fluid and pressurizing it, you get a lot of heat generated there. Now, people are like, okay, well, what about shifting? Okay, when you shift gears during the fluid shearing phase of clutch engagement, yeah, you get a little bit of heat there, not a lot, not even really enough to talk about. Uh, if, we, if we didn't do anything with the transmission, you know, if the torque converter wasn't there and the pump wasn't there, the amount of heat that we generated just in the fluid shearing phase of the clutch engagement, we wouldn't even need to talk about it. You wouldn't need any kind of cooler or any kind of temperature control device. It'd be, it's not enough. Uh, on the Subaru transmission, there is a, a small amount generated in the transfer clutch, more than in the other clutches, uh, but not so much that we're going to, you know, lose our minds over it. So, um, what, what, what is the temperature of the fluid supposed to be? Well, generally, uh, we're going we're gonna to try to do about 170 to 212. And you're like, wow, that, that sounds really familiar. Well, it is, because that's the same temperature that we want for the engine coolant. So, I mean, why, why reinvent the wheel, right? Like, if, if we're going to run the engine at that temperature, let's just run the transmission at that temperature also to make things easy. So that's, that's what we do. For the SVX specifically, uh, normal uh, fluid temperature is, I, I believe it's like about 180, 190, somewhere in there, is what the spec is for normal, like that's fully warmed up. Anything below that is not yet warmed up. So uh, 50 degrees, 100 degrees, 125 degrees, 150 degrees, 160 degrees, that's not warmed up yet. Okay, that is not hot yet. That is not warm. We're not there yet. So we want that fluid hotter. We want that fluid to get warmer and up to normal operating temperature. There's a bunch of reasons for that. Uh, that's where everything is designed to work the best as far as the friction modifiers. That's where the viscosity and the fluid is optimized. Everything is just optimized for it to be at that temperature. So we want it at that temperature. We don't want it colder than that and we don't want it hotter than that. Realistically, the fluid performance as far as the friction modifiers go and the performance of it is in the clutches, you're going to be fine. It's, it, it's fine whether it's at, you know, some ridiculous number like minus, I don't know, 40 degrees, probably more than that, all the way up to 280 or 300. The fluid itself is going to be fine at that temperature. Now, that doesn't mean the transmission is, but I'll get to that later. Um, so what happens if the fluid is too cold or too hot? I kind of touched on that a little bit earlier. If the fluid is too cold, it's, it's too thick, the pump has to work harder, um, you know, the valve body, the, the mechanical parts, the springs, and all this different stuff is calibrated for this specific viscosity. And it's, so it's just not gonna be working as designed yet. Um, that's not an issue anymore with modern transmissions because, I mean, as everyone knows, we're talking about a transmission that was came to market in 1987. So, you know, the technology is very, very different now. But back then, we're, we're coming into an age where we're just out of still using mechanical stuff to do all this. So, uh, the, the fluid too cold not not the best there's no reason for the fluid to be too cold like if the transmission actually works worse if the fluid is colder uh, what happens if the fluid gets too hot well of course thermal degradation it oxidizes um, it this shortens the life of the fluid now how hot is too hot uh, well realistically you don't want your atf to be more than 212 right is the fluid going to be damaged if it's a 215? No, no, it's nothing like that. 220, your fluid's going to be fine. Now, once we start talking about like 240, 250, 260, that's where I'm going to start to get worried. And I'm only talking about the fluid. 
the fluid will, the transmission parts will still be fine. Um, but the fluid, I'm like, man, I'm really gonna see some, some shortening of the life expectancy on the fluid. Uh, the transmission would be fine, but my fluid might only go 20,000 miles or so. So I don't wanna run it that high. Um, of course, if I'm at 250, 260, these kind of temperatures, I'm gonna start to break down uh, the external seals and stuff like that, especially when we're talking about a car of this age. There's been a lot of advances made in rubber since uh, the SVX was built as far as seals, both internal in the transmission and your external seals, uh, especially the torque converter seal right here um, can be really nasty on these if it, if it gets hot. Um, so for that reason, I don't want my ATF over 220, 230 if I can help it. Now, if, if I was measuring my uh, transmission fluid correctly and it got up to 230 because something weird was happening, you know, maybe I went up a huge hill the AC's on full blast. I've got four people in the, and luggage in the car, you know, and it's 110 degrees outside. Uh, that's fine. There's, that's not gonna hurt anything. The fluid will be fine. The transmission's gonna be fine. Everything's gonna be fine, no problem. So having said that, um, what is the flow of the transmission fluid and why is that important? Well. When we look at the, the fluid body, remember, remember, you know, if we're using the analogy of a, a pool heater, we're going to specifically route the flow through so that we, you know, when we get to the heater, we're then going to run that, that out into the pool where it can heat the pool. And we're going to take water from, you know, way over here to go into the heater. Wouldn't make sense if we, you know, if we had an outlet right here and then right next to it, we're taking the air, the water in to be heated. That wouldn't make any sense. So we're gonna do the same thing in the transmission. And you're like, well, but the transmission doesn't have a heater. Well, okay, remember what I said, we got our pump and our torque converter. Without those two, we wouldn't even have any heat in the transmission. No one would ever even care about what the fluid temperature was because it would, it would be impossible to get it hot. But we have a pump and we have a torque converter especially when we have an old pump on a transmission like this and a torque converter on a transmission like this. Okay, so we've, we've got potentially a lot of heat that could be generated because we have a high horsepower engine. We've got a relatively low final drive in here and we've only got four gears, right? So basically when you, we look at a four speed transmission, it's not enough gears. So basically you have four wrong choices. So due to the nature of a torque converter, we're gonna use that torque converter a lot when it's unlocked because that's gonna give me a little bit of a variable uh, ratio type effect. I'm gonna to get torque multiplication uh, so that I can actually have, you know, I can have first gear, but depending on my throttle, I have this range where the torque converter is operating and multiplying the torque. You know, it's not like a manual where in a manual, if you're in second gear, you know, you have gears that are meshed. That's, that's your ratio. Automatics are, are not like that, assuming the torque converter is unlocked, because remember, it's a fluid coupling, so it can vary a little bit. Um, and, and having a four-speed transmission, we're really gonna have to take advantage of that, because like I said, we only have four gears, and we're gonna want this car to drive all the way from zero miles an hour up to you know potentially 75, 80, 90, 100. Of course, the SVX will do 120, no problem. Um, so, we have the potential to generate this heat. And you think, okay, cool. So having said that, we, we definitely want to do something with that fluid to make sure it doesn't get too hot, okay? Um, well, what are we gonna do? Well, remember that the fluid is designed to operate at the same temperature that the engine is, right? So we've got over, you know, the engine radiator over here, and we've got engine coolant in here that's going to be, or short, or if we've just started, will shortly be at the temperature that we want the automatic transmission fluid to be. What are we going to do? We're going to take the automatic transmission fluid, and we're going to put it over here with the coolant so that they can exchange heat between one another, whichever way is necessary, so that their temperature can become equalized. Because remember what I said, yes, we're concerned about cooling the transmission because if we drove the car without any sort of cooler from the pump and the torque converter, we'd burn it up. We'd blow, we'd, we'd 
boil all the fluid out, you know, would be bad. So basically what we're going to do, and this is pretty common to, to all transmissions really, is we're going to have an outlet over here on the transmission, on, on this transmission, it's actually down here near the uh, pump test port. And it's coming right off of the torque converter, which is right here. You have your torque converter right here. And then you know, you've got a little drain back over here in your pump. So this is where the heat is being generated, here and here. So what we're gonna do is immediately after that fluid is done in there, we're gonna come out of the case right here and we're going to go over to the radiator and we're going to meet right there. Now, okay, so I've got my hottest, absolute hottest the fluid will ever be. It never touches anything else in the transmission. It goes straight out from the pump and the converter over here to the cooler, right? Okay, so what what is it what it, what is this? Well, as I said, we've got engine uh, coolant in here in our tanks right so this is all coolant in here and all coolant in here right and then it's flowing through our radiator here uh, to be cooled it, you know like I said we're gonna assume the engines fully warmed up so we've got air going through the radiator and that that coolant is exchanging its heat with the air and this way we call this a liquid to air heat exchanger. Very simple, heater core works the same way. Um, but what's going on down here in our lower tank? Well, down there we have, a, it's usually made of copper, a copper pipe. Uh, there, there are various different things that you can do down there, but just for simplicity, I'm gonna say it's a pipe. So we have down in that area, a piece of copper. I, I haven't seen one of these radiators apart in 15 years, but I believe it's a it is a pipe and it's about half an inch in diameter. So I have my inlet here, right, and then I have a copper pipe right through here, right. So my transmission fluid is gonna be in here inside this copper pipe. And what's it gonna do in there? Well, as I said, the, this pipe is, is, call it half an inch, it, it's definitely larger than the, the lines going to it. So basically what I'm gonna do in here is I'm gonna slow the fluid down a little bit and allow some fluid to pool in there, sort of like a reservoir. Um, and why am I going to do that? Well, obviously what I'm trying to do is transfer heat either to this copper pipe or from this copper pipe to my transmission fluid. Okay, so if this, if, if this, like if we're driving this car, this car has been driven, it's a normal, you know, everything's fully warmed up. This fluid here coming out of the torque converter is probably going to be like 220, maybe even 230. So it's flowed right out of the torque converter. Torque converter's nice and hot, doing its thing. Pump's nice and hot, doing its thing. We're, we're cruising along, no problem. So my fluid comes in here, and it hits this, this, this uh, engine coolant at 230 degrees. Well, remember, we've got two fluids where one of their primary jobs is to transfer heat. And we've got a piece of metal here, which is a very good heat conductor. So in that way, these two fluids are gonna rat very quickly uh, try to reach equilibrium. So if this is the hotter, if the ATF is a hotter fluid, its heat is gonna be transferred into the engine coolant. Now notice I did not say directly to the air, because remember this pipe in here is just in the lower tank of the radiator. So it's got coolant all around it. So that hot ATF in there is gonna make that copper pipe 230 degrees or however hot, and the coolant will then take that, that heat off and then you know, do its thing and transfer that heat to the air. Now, of course, again, just for, for clarity, we're not, there's no direct path from the ATF to the air. 
Okay, so we've transferred the heat from one fluid body to another fluid body. Okay, so the heat, whatever the heat is here, um, you know, you can use delta T, delta H, whatever you want to call it, is gonna exchange with the other fluid body. Okay, and then that fluid body is then gonna do whatever it's gonna do with the heat, depending on what direction you're going. In this case, got hot ATF, it's gonna heat the coolant a little bit, the coolant's gonna then have that heat, the coolant is then gonna dissipate that heat in the radiator the same way it does the engine heat. And then when you come out here, you're gonna have uh, ATF that's some amount cooler, you know, delta T. So then what are we gonna do from there? We're gonna take that fluid, the cool fluid, and we're gonna take it up in here and it's gonna go back into the transmission back here and basically it dumps on a bearing, but it basically just think of it as a shower head. So it basically just sprays down in here and then joins the our fluid body in the pan. So now that's transmission cooler. But remember what I said here about the heat exchange, right? And remember what I said, we want this fluid to be this temperature, right? The engine, the engine temperature. So if if I'm looking at it the other way, say, say it's you know five degrees outside, I started the car up, uh, you know, I'm, I'm leaving my neighborhood, I've got I've got you know 190 here in my uh, radiator, my thermostat's just starting to open. So I'm starting to get some heat in here, then this ATF, you know, especially in an SVX, if you've driven this car one or two miles and it's five degrees outside, this fluid in here is gonna be five degrees. So it's gonna go through here and then the exact same thing is gonna happen because you know, it's not intelligent in any way, it's just these two fluids interacting. So if this is the hotter fluid, it's gonna transfer that heat into the ATF and then as this ATF comes back here out of the cooler, it's gonna be warmer. So uh, in that way, here we don't have a cooler. What we have is a liquid to liquid heat exchanger. This is a temperature stabilization device. It's not a heater, it's not a cooler. You can call it either because it does that function just depending on, on what it is. Not a cooler, uh, I generally anymore don't call it a cooler because I think it just confuses people. So cool, so we've got that, we understand what we're dealing with here. So great, you mean, okay, makes sense, right? I'm, I'm gonna stabilize my ATF temperature with my coolant temperature. Cool, well, here, here's a real interesting thing that uh, most people don't realize is that the primary cooling of the automatic transmission fluid takes place not in here. Remember, this is this is a temperature stabilization device, and there's not really that much fluid in here. Flow through this should be about one uh, one GPM. I think that's yeah on a on a SVX transmission with a good TPS at idle, you'd have about one GPM through here. Um, but in our transmission we have this stamped steel pan, right? And remember, we've got our, our pickup is in here, so we've got our fluid in here, and then it's picked up out of the, the pan, just like an oil pan in an engine, and fed into the pump to be pressurized, and then into our torque converter over here. Well, in here we have a pool, we have a reservoir, we have our swimming pool down here. This is where I care about what the fluid temperature is. If I wanna know what the fluid temperature is, I wanna measure it right here, because this is my fluid body. Most of the fluid, well, most of the fluid's in the torque converter, but most of the fluid is gonna be in here, right? So just hanging out, waiting to be cycled through. So having said that, we've got a steel pan right here, right? And the, under the air, you know, is coming through, because we're underneath the car, We've got air coming past right here, and it's gonna flow over that, that pan. And we've got a big, that pan's pretty big, you know, if you've seen it, it's, you know, what is it? It's not square, but it's about, what, 
10, 12 inches or so. So we've got a lot of surface area and we've got air over here. And you know, global warming and all that, but your air is not gonna be 150, 200 degrees. So we're getting a lot, a lot, a lot of heat exchange happening there. And of course, remember, the more different the temperature of the fluid in the air is, the more heat exchange is gonna occur. Of course, that's true over here. The more different these two temperatures are, the more heat is gonna be exchanged. So, we, you know, we've got the fluid hanging out here in the pan. And as I, as I kind of said earlier, this is where I wanna know what the fluid temperature is, right? Because this is the fluid that's at rest. This is my pool of available fluid that I'm gonna to use to lubricate my clutches, I'm gonna to try to use it to pressurize my high clutch. That's a little joke for later. And then, um, you know, everything I need to do in this transmission, lubricate the planetaries, run the transfer clutch, all that stuff, all through the valve body, is gonna be drawn from this fluid that's just resting here. So, and that's exactly what the TCU does. Attached to the low underside of the valve body is a, is a temperature sensor. And so, that's where I'm concerned about the fluid temperature. This is a big uh, misconception that I see a lot is because over here on, on the 92s, you have a filter in here, right? And so a lot of people are like, man, that's a great spot to, you know, pop in a new filter and uh, I'm gonna, you know, put a temperature sensor in there. And, you know, then I, then I you know, jump on the forum and, and somebody's like, man, my, my ATF, it's, it's 230. I saw it reach 240 the other day. I'm like, no, no, it's not, okay? No, it isn't. If your transmission fluid in here was 240 degrees, you'd be in big trouble. You'd be boiling fluid in here. Trust me, on these transmissions, you'll boil fluid in here. You'll spit the torque converter seal out because it'll seize on the torque converter that will be glowing red and you'll spit fluid out the vents, okay? You don't have anywhere near that in here. As a matter of fact, um, for many years, I had my TCU program to turn the light on at 212. I got it to come on one time, and that was because I did it on purpose after years of driving it in Oklahoma. I couldn't get it to do it, and I was like, okay, there's gotta be a way to do this. Rapidly accelerated the car, stopped, stalled it for about 30 seconds, floored it all the way up to 40, stopped, stalled it again. After about five minutes of doing that, I finally got that light to come on. It stayed on for maybe two minutes. You know, as soon as I let off it, that fluid in here, if my fluid in here is 212, I'm probably at 250 coming out of here. And by the time it gets in here, that heat exchange is gonna be really extreme. And not only that, I've got 212 degrees in this fluid pan, and I've got 100 degree air out here. And I've got a huge pan of, you know, inch deep fluid, that heat is not gonna stay in, in that fluid. You'd have to have something really generating a lot of heat to keep the fluid that hot. Because remember, one of the main jobs of ATF is to absorb and, and dissipate heat. So, now, so like I said, if, if you measure your fluid temperature right here after it comes out of the torque converter and all that, uh, cool, that doesn't mean anything. 240, you know, even 250 right here, which it won't be that hot. Even if it was 250, I don't care. All we're gonna do is go into the cooler right here. So if this, say this was 250, when it came out of the converter, that fluid is gonna be 250 degrees for what, a second? Because by the time it gets to here, inside the radiator, it's gonna be cooled. It's, it's gonna be cooled way down. And then by the time it gets out of here, it's gonna be, back to a very reasonable temperature. And then it's gonna come in here, sprinkle down, and it's gonna join this fluid here, which is gonna be way cooler than this anyway. So it, it, remember, we're talking about an entire fluid system. Okay, I'm not worried about what the fluid temperature is here. I'm not worried about what the fluid temperature is here. I'm worried about what the fluid temperature is here, and that's it. All I need to know is do I have enough capacity in here to heat or cool my fluid? The answer to that question on the SVX is absolutely yes, this is not an issue. 
do I have enough heating and cooling capacity, well, cooling only capacity in the fluid pan? SVX going down the road, absolutely. It's very difficult to actually get these hot. As I said, you have to specifically be, go out and be like, I want to try to get the ATF hot. So, you're saying, yeah, but remember what I said, this is a 3.54 in here, right? Fairly low, um, gear, fairly short gear. I've got a, I've got a, you know, 230 horsepower engine up here. It's like, okay, cool. But this is, this is another part that's really confusing. It's actually the other way around when you think about this. 230 horsepower against a, you know, four-speed transmission in a car that's shaped like a doorstop. Car, yeah, SVX is a heavy car. What are they, 3,500 pounds for the fully loaded one? You're never gonna really stress this transmission. And keep in mind how the SVX drives. This whole this transmission's trying to get into fourth gear like it's its job. You know how the SVX drives. It, even if you're driving it fairly hard, by the time you get to 50, the car's in fourth gear and it's got the torque converter locked up. And once once you're done shifting and once your torque converter is locked up, you're not generating any more heat. The only place you're going to get heat is off the back side of the torque converter, and that's only because it's physically touching the engine. Otherwise, your fluid is just going through here, lubricating the, the gears and everything. So there's no more heat generation. It's not like this thing is constantly, uh, you know, churning this fluid and, and burning it up. So, and like I said, keep in mind, the SVX, you never tax the engine on this, on this car. If you are taxing the engine on an SVX, you're gonna be, you know, driving the car really fast, which means more, more airflow across here, more airflow across the, the radiator. I mean, think about it. What is a car? Uh, it'll shift out a third at like 120. So even if I'm flooring the car, I'm not gonna be stressing this torque converter. It, it, yeah, yeah, that, that, that'll heat it up, but not to any extreme. By the time I've had sustained stress on the torque converter, the car is going ridiculous speeds. You know, I'm, I'm, you know, before you can even measure a heat increase in here at all, the car is going 90 miles an hour. So having said that, what does overheat transmissions? Well, I want you to think about this exact same system, except instead of 230 horsepower right here, I've got a dinky little EA82 with, what is it, 90 horsepower? And it's actually kind of funny to look at because that little bitty engine on the front of this transmission looks really kind of funny because the engine's like this big and it's got this giant transmission behind it. So I've got this little tiny little dinky engine over here and a car that's shaped like a brick. Uh, and I'm gonna try to pull this car up the mountains, right? Well, the engine, you know, the transmission is gonna have to be in a low gear because the engine's not generating any power. Not only that, remember what I said about the torque multiplication, this torque converter is gonna be unlocked, which of course these transmissions, unless they're overheating, will not lock the torque converter in any gear except for a fourth. So transmission, it, it's unlocked, and I've got my little 90 horsepower engine just chugging away as much as it can, trying to get me up this hill and uh, you know Breckenridge or wherever I'm going. And as that's doing it, this fluid's getting hotter and hotter and hotter and hotter and this this right here we're starting to get some really extreme heat transfer across there engine coolant's getting hot man I'm, I'm, i see my temperature gauge start creeping up because we're actually running this transmission so hot that the engine heat of course the engine is working hard too and the trans heat exceed the the heat transfer availability of the radiator and the and the pan so we start to overheat it I was like, man, well, that's not good. And you're right, it's not. Uh, what happens when they do that? You keep on driving it like that. You, you start seeing 300 degrees across here. The torque converter turns black and blue. Like I said, you blow the seal out of here because the rubber seal melts and seizes the torque converter, tears up the bushing, starts blowing fluid out of the vents. Your fluid aerates, destroys your pump, and your transmission's toast. Uh, I have not personally seen one this bad, but one of the super guys that I work with told me that he has seen the on the Loyal so bad 
that you can't even disassemble it. You know, you take it and the gears are basically welded together because the fluid aerated and just, just totally destroyed the thing. Again, how did we get the transmission that hot? It's because we're constantly shearing that fluid, trying to push the car down the road. The SVX is just not gonna do that. I've driven an SVX all over the country. I've driven it up some of the steepest hills out there. You know, you get on a really steep grade. The SVX is gonna be in fourth gear with the torque converter locked up and, you know, like nothing. Especially with the way that the TCU works in this old car where they're not really worried about emissions, they're worried about the car being quiet. So anybody who's driven an SVX knows what a fight it is to get the car to actually come out of fourth. Pretty sure you could be at half throttle on a hill and it's still gonna be in fourth with the torque converter locked. Remember what I said, if the car is in that scenario, you're not generating any heat whatsoever in here. And the little heat that you are getting just, just from the, the proximity to the engine is way less than is gonna be dissipated through the fluid. So SVXs, they don't overheat the transmission. They don't have a problem dissipating the heat that they do generate they actually don't generate very much heat at all. It's actually quite annoying to have to heat a transmission up in one of these. Um, personally, I think uh, this, I'll talk more about this in a later video, but we, we really, it's really important on the SVX with the stock TCU that we get this fluid to 170 degrees as quickly as possible. In a perfect world, I would tell everyone to never ever drive an SVX with an automatic transmission unless the fluid was 170, 212 degrees. Of course, that's not realistic. Uh, some of you may know that the, I believe it's 50, I think it's 50 and you've got fourth gear prohibit, which is actually the reason why they did that. And remember it's an old car, is because they want the engine coolant hot. So they assume that if your, your ATF is 50 or below, you haven't heated up your coolant enough yet. Um, and then uh, is, it, is it 120 or, or 100 or 150? I mean, obviously it's in Celsius, so it's in there somewhere. That's uh, when it prevents lockup of the torque converter. Again, like I said, if we have that torque converter unlocked, that's how we're gonna generate the most heat in our transmission. So we're actually trying to use the transmission to heat the fluid. Of course, nobody does that anymore because that's a horrific waste of fuel and uh, no one really cares um, anymore because our fluids are, are way better. Um, so. We've got all that, right? So question, people are like, well, and then the answer should be obvious to everyone that's still with me after I've droned on for this long. It's like, why didn't they put a cooler on this car from the factory? And by cooler, I mean a separate radiator and a, a, a liquid to air heat exchanger specifically for the automatic transmission uh, fluid. Many cars have this. I like to make the joke that the one in a Toyota Land Cruiser is larger than the radiator in a Honda Civic. That's, that's really not an exaggeration. I'm talking about the old Civic from the 90s. Um, so why didn't they do that? Well, we don't need that. You know, they're not just gonna put an extra part on the car because somebody's like, I think it should have a transmission cooler. We don't need it. And what's worse, and I, you know, I've, I've built a lot of these transmissions, including my personal SVX I had I think it was five different variations of transmission that I had done different things to in it. And several of them did have coolers. I had both um, an inline cooler where say I took uh, right here or right here, doesn't really matter, and added an air to air or a liquid to air cooler. And what did that end up doing? Well, it just overcooled my fluid. So I remember um, it was the first transmission that I built, which was pretty much a stock uh, 92 transmission. I didn't even do any of the updates to it. Um, of course, it, 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 it only lasted, I think, 60,000 miles, but that was my first shot right out of the gate. Um, but anyway, um, that car in the winter, if the outside temperature was below about 40, even if it heated up enough to give me torque converter lock, if I went down the freeway for more than a couple miles, it'd actually cool my fluid off so much that it unlocked the torque converter, heat it back up, lock my torque converter again. That, we don't want to be doing that. 
It's not necessary. That cold fluid is actually worse. Like I said, none of the stuff in here is optimized for fluid below about 170, right? And as a matter of fact, um, I'll talk in a, in a later video about what the actual problem with the transmission is, but the TCU, which is, the TCU is the idiot in the room, and the TCU is, is most of the problem why we have transmission problems, but here's the, the real kicker. The TCU utilizing a duty solenoid is gonna modulate our main pressure off the pump, depending on what the temperature is, to, per, to reduce shift shock and to um, give the correct pressure, you know, depending on the, the, the viscosity of the fluid. So, um, don't wanna get too much into that right now, but the main problem that we have with these transmissions is that the pressure is too low. So, if we have fluid below 150 degrees, or so, it's something like that, it's right in there, then the TCU, the first thing it's gonna do is reduce that fluid pressure even more. So basically we're making a bad situation worse. So, no, I never want this fluid below 150. I don't care if this fluid is 212 or 190 or 180 or 215 or, or, or 220, which again, like I said, you will never get the fluid 220 in the pan for more than a couple of seconds. And even if you do that, you're gonna be doing something wild. You're gonna be climbing a hill at 35 miles an hour in manual second uh, trolling a trailer. It's, it's really difficult to get these that hot. You just can't do it. So for that reason, we don't want to overcool the fluid. Best case scenario, um, I've got, uh, everything's working completely correctly as it did on paper. All you're doing is, is using more energy in the pump because the fluid's thicker and creating more frictional losses. So you're basically losing horsepower and efficiency. Like I said, worst case scenario, your line pressure is already low. You're gonna drop it even further and you're gonna burn up your transmission. Almost all of these transmissions that fail, I will tell you how will you know that it's bad? Man, that first two to three shift, it's trash. Shift flare, kinds of bad stuff. Once the fluid's warmed up, it shifts okay. Why is that? Because when the fluid's cold, it's bleeding this pressure down, the fluid is thicker, it's just a bad situation. All right, um, AT oil temp light, what is that? Uh, that is a light, like I said, it's just, it's a logic based on the, the temp sensor in here. Um, I have never seen one come on in an SVX that has the factory, uh, the factory programming. I think it's like 240 degrees. Like I said, I, I, I'm not sure that it's possible to get the fluid in the pan up to 240 in an SVX. I think if you, if you did, your fluid would be boiling in, in the torque converter because it should, this is where all the heat's being generated. And in order to get this fluid that hot, you're gonna to have to have some really extreme fluid in here. Just remember, this fluid, when it joins the fluid body, it then you then have the capacity of the entire fluid body. And there's quite a bit of fluid on these. Someone, uh, someone will know. I think it's more than 12 quarts. It's a lot. So we've got a lot of fluid. Um, I don't know who thought that AT oil temp would be useful. Um, I I, I haven't heard, but I've never really asked on the old Loyal's if anybody ever saw it come on. I tend to doubt it, um, but if, if your AT oil temp light comes on in an SVX, somehow you've managed to trick the car into trying to run a clutch that's long since trash. It's the only way you're gonna do that. And uh, yeah, that, that's a bad situation. Um, all right, the cooler is restrictive. A lot of people talk about this and they're like, oh my gosh, well, you know, with this coming here and all this stuff and I blew in there and I felt like it's a little restrictive. Okay, remember what I said, this is a reservoir. The fluid is pooling in here to give it time to interact with, these, with the coolant. That's what it's supposed to do. Okay, cool. Well, what happens if, if like in the, the early cars, if this actually gets clogged. Well, in a decision that 
I will never understand, as I mentioned earlier, this fluid here actually does something when it comes back. It actually sprays over a bearing and actually lubricates part of the rear planetary. It, you know, it just sprinkles over it. Um, so if this fluid is completely interrupted, you'll seize this back bearing. That's what happened to the very, very early cars because they had a problem with the torque converter clutch and it started to spit out fibrous materials into it, which came out through here and into this radiator cooler. Now on 1992, early cars only inside here, they had a, a little screen. It looked like a window screen. Of course, it was much finer. That was meant to slow down the fluid, you know, so the fluid going through it would slow down and it would interact with that screen, which then promoted more heat exchange in there cool, right? Not if that gets clogged with clutch material from a defective torque converter. So basically what we had happen is that this was blocked, like I said. And so transmission destroyed. It wasn't really the ones that I have seen that did this and it's very, very early production. They changed it actually in 1992. Um, it wasn't the heat. Yeah, they had, you could tell it, it might have gotten a little warm, but the thing is, his bearings were trash because they weren't lubricated. Not, it didn't take very long to tear that up either. Uh, so what is the appropriate fix for that? Well, torque converter should have been replaced. Radiator should have been replaced. Well, we're talking about Subaru in the 90s, very bad financial position. So we're like, hey, let's just put a filter right here, right? Cool. So now we have this dinky little filter right in here. Looks, um, looks almost like a fuel filter. And the point of that is like, hey, if we catch this clutch material, can't clog that, we're golden. Whatever, man, I, I wasn't on the team that made that decision. The correct repair for that, torque converter replacement, fluid flush, radiator replacement. I would not recommend anyone drive an SVX with a 92 radiator. I would not recommend anyone drive an SVX with a 92 torque converter. Now, if you have a 92 SVX, do I expect you to pull the trans and replace the converter? No, that's, it's not viable. Uh, it should have been done under warranty, but at this point it's not viable. What do I suggest that you do? If you have the a radiator that is original to the car, and this is a 1992 car, I would recommend that you replace this radiator, okay? Um, it, it, if it was replaced at any time during the, the car's life, except for right away in early 1992, you're gonna be fine because Subaru, of course, when they made the change, all of the service parts are destroyed and they send out the updated part. Uh, if you've got a 93 or newer, your radiator's fine, your torque converter's fine. If you ever build a 92 transmission, that torque converter goes in the trash. It either goes off and is rebuilt uh, by someone who does that. Transstar, I think they still do it. Uh, the torque converter is uh, discontinued uh, from Subaru. But 92 torque converter, no bueno. Now, once that's all done, remove this filter and throw it away. Uh, another quick thing about filters, down here in the, in the pickup from the pan is a screen. It again is just a, a window screen. It's basically designed so that uh, there's, it's not going to pick up a rock, you know, or something ridiculous that's in the pan and suck it into the pump because the pump will get destroyed. It's not a filter. Uh, older Chrysler's General Motors actually use an actual filter element in there. Subaru doesn't do that. Uh, later, later transmissions had a spin-on filter. Um, the, the Phase 2, um, 4 speeds and the 5 speeds had, it looked like an oil filter. Um, do you need to add a filter here? No, you can if you just, you're obsessed with that and you really want to. I will promise you it's not necessary because if all you're gonna do is, if your transmission goes bad, you're gonna be like, cool, now I have a filter that I need to replace. It's not gonna help the transmission from not going bad. The one thing I will tell you, you've got to remember, if you restrict this flow through here, you're not going to get any kind of warning lights. You're not going to know anything's happened, but you'll seize this bearing and it will destroy the transmission. Like it's, it's nasty what it does. The whole planetary will get seized up and trash. So I think I about beat that 
horse. Uh, wow, this is incredibly long. I apologize for being long-winded. Um, any questions, please feel free to ask. I hope I didn't misspeak on anything. Uh, if I did, definitely let me know. And remember, not a cooler. This is a heat exchanger, a liquid to liquid heat stabilization device. I could just as easily call that the ATF heater as I could the ATF cooler.